this is you don't like need to memorize it. It's kind of one of those things that um, you kind of figure out and it's not necessary. Like you could do it without knowing it, but it makes life a little faster. You know, mathematicians like quick and easy routes. So this is a quick and easy route. Unless you like quick and easy routes, which I sure do. So, um, second fun fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, we're going to start with uh, the little remember piece. Okay, so you remember the notation for d dx. What does that mean? Derivative, derivative right? Okay, so if you have the derivative of an integral, what is what happens? They cancel out, right? So you're basically just left with the original function. Okay, so um, what this is is now they give you a definite integral, and then we'll derive the definite integral. Okay, so um, for question number one, we're just going to start by integrating the piece. Okay, so uh, let's start with integrating 2t. What is the integral of 2t? t squared. And then what's the integral of 3? So minus 3t. And then you have to do the big minus the little, right? So you just plug in x. So we get x squared minus 3x. And then can I be a little bit lazy here and just realize that if I plug 0 in, you get 0? OK. So I won't write it. I'm sure. Are you sure? <laughs> okay, you don't need a plus C because we're doing a definite integral. Okay, so now if we take that and go to question number two and now derive what I just did, so my little piece that's in blue, what's the derivative of x squared? 2x, and what's the derivative of 3x? Minus 3. Okay, so did you notice anything? Like, Maybe just on part two, it's number two. Numbers. It's like the same thing, but you like plug the variable into the little sp other variable. Okay. Um, for three, uh, let's do, what is the derivative? No, excuse me, I said that wrong. What is the integral of the derivative of f of t? The original f of t, right? So we would have f of t from x to 10. So then I would plug this in. So now this is just using the notation form of this. So I plug um, x in and I plug 10 in. So that piece is the derivative. So now for question four, if I, or excuse me, I said that wrong again. Gosh, I got this. That was the integral. Now if we derive that, what's the derivative of f of x? The derivative of f of x. What's the derivative of f of 10? Okay, so think about what would happen if I have f of 10, I would technically take 10, plug it into the function, and what kind of thing would pop out? A number, right? So if I take a derivative of any number, what do I get? Zero. Okay, so any number is going to basically disappear on us. Okay, so here is the definition of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so it basically just plug in the variable and then the constant just basically disappears because you derive a constant and it becomes zero. Okay, uh, so question number five, this is an important piece of this. So let's start with the integral of the derivative of f of t. So what's the integral of the derivative of f of t? Did you guys say f of t? <laughs> so f of t. So now if we do big minus little, I would plug it in. So I'd do f of x squared minus f of 0. OK, so that's the integral piece. So now when we derive this, what is the derivative of f of x squared? Okay, you're on the right track. Okay, so you have to, basically what we have is a chain rule. Okay, you have an outside and you have an inside. X squared can be derived. Okay, 
So I would do the derivative of the outside, so the derivative of f of x squared, but I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So it's the derivative of the inside, 2x. Okay, so they have this hook on factor that they talked about. I think that's how they describe the chain rule. Um, what's the derivative of f of 0? Zero. 0, so that just goes away. Okay, so there you go. So you notice anything there? It's really almost the exact same, but if the piece that you plug in can be derived, you got to multiply by it. Okay, so what about number 7? Uh, what is the integral of the derivative of f of t? So you get f of t between 2x and x cubed. So now we do big minus little where I plug it in. So it would be f of 2x minus f of x cubed. Okay, so now for question number 8, if I derive that, what is the derivative of f of 2x? So everybody thinking the derivative of f of 2x times 2? No? Yep. You're lost? So all I'm doing, uh, Matt, is I'm just taking the derivative. So the derivative of any function is just the derivative. And then multiplying by the derivative of the inside. So what's the derivative of f of x cubed? <coughs> So derivative of x cubed, and then what do I have to multiply by? There you go, 3x squared. Does that make sense? Okay, so you have to multiply by that hook on factor. Okay, so this is uh, just what the, the fundamental theorem of calculus with the chain rule version looks like. Um, if you want to write that down, you can, but I think examples are more valuable. But that's my opinion. Okay, so let's do a few more examples. This time, we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so we're going to go straight to the fast and easy way of doing this. Okay, so how would I do number nine? First of all, what happens with the zero on the top? It goes away. Okay, so then if I plug the x in, what do I need to have in front of it? A negative, because I technically have to subtract big minus little, right? So it'd be negative, and then two, I just plug the x in, minus three. And you can always just simply multiply by the derivative of whatever your variable is. What is the derivative of x? One. So technically we are multiplying by that same derivative. We just don't have to write 1, right? So you could write this as negative 2x plus 3 if it made you feel happier. <laughs> Either way, it makes me feel happier. Okay, what about number 10? We have um, our inter integral between 2 and 5. So can we go straight to the answer on that one? Anybody got an answer in their head that they're willing to share? Zero. Did anybody else get zero? Yes. Just Ethan? Yes. Yes. Okay, so because, because if you do the derivative of the integral of a constant, it's zero. And since both of them are zero, you have zero minus zero, which is zero. That's exactly right. Very good. No, all we're doing is we're just going straight to plugging it in. Okay, so all we're doing is we're plugging whatever the, the integrals are, but if it's a constant, it's just zero, because the idea is that you derived it. So if neither of them is an x, then you just say zero? It's zero, exactly. Right. Okay, so exactly. Okay, let's try number 11. So what would I do for 11? What am I going to do with the x cubed? Eventually, yes. But what do I do right before that part? 
No, not subtract one. one. You just plug it in. Yeah, you just plug it into the, the variable. So you plug it in. So you have um, x cubed squared plus 2 times x cubed. So you plug it in. And then you multiply by the hook on factor, which is the derivative of that. So what's the derivative of x cubed? 3x squared. Okay, so you could technically leave it like that. I don't like to leave it that way. Oh, how about the one? Oh, it's, zero. it's zero, right? Okay, so I just kind of skipped it because it was zero. Sorry, that was kind of a mental quick. Thing. The derivative of this is negative one. I mean, you have two x cubes. Two of the x cubes. Well. Okay, so you just that's just the part where you plug in. So basically what you're doing, part one of this, plug it in, and then part two is multiplied by the derivative of it. If it's a constant, you just call it zero altogether. Multiply by of the value, not the of your, your x piece. Yes. So, so whatever your integral is bounded by, that's what I'm talking about, those numbers. Okay. Um, what is x cubed squared equivalent to? close x to the 6 multiply so you have x to the 6 this is kind of a good refresher with that 2x cubed and if I happen to have that times x squared what do I do with exponents in that case so if I have 3x squared times x to the 6 what's that 3x to the 8th <laughs> so you, have, you see the difference so like x cubed squared they're both exponents. Okay. So when they're both exponents, like an exponent to an exponent, that's when you multiply. But when you have two of the x's, so you have x squared times x to the 6, that's when okay. you add them. So 3x to the 8th, and then plus 6x to the 5th. Good refresher the there. What's that? Uh, technically, no. But if it was a multiple choice, it would be in simplified version. So you need to be able to do that, because they probably would throw out the version that... Um, Abby tried to get to as one of the answers, right? Okay, so what about number 12? Okay, what do I do? Plug in 3x. Okay, so I'm going to plug it in. So I have 3x squared plus 2 times 3x. And then what do I have to multiply by? The derivative. So what's the derivative of 3x? 3, good. And then I'm going to subtract. And what do I do for the 2x? Plug it in. So I'm going to plug in 2x. So I got 2x squared plus 2 times 2x. And what do I have to multiply by? 2, good. The derivative of 2x is 2. Okay, um, I don't like the way that looks. You could leave this on for response. But I'm going to simplify it. What's 3x squared? 9x squared. And 2 times 3x is 6x. So we have that times 3. I'm going to pull that in front. It makes me feel happier. Same with the 2. And then I would have 4x squared plus 4x. Okay. I can even go further with that and distribute the 3 and the negative 2, so that would make 27x squared plus 18x. Distribute the negative 2, so minus 8x squared minus 8x. And then I can still go further and add like terms. How many x squareds do I end up with? 19x squareds, and how many x's? 10. Okay, so if you type this into the calculator, that would be the answer you would see. Okay, so if you're trying to figure out if you did it correctly, you would you would get to that simplified version. Okay, so now 13, this is giving you the notation. Okay, so you got between g of x and f of x. So what do I do first? Plug it in. Okay, so I just plug in the g of x. So I have 2 times g of x minus 3. And then what do I have to multiply by? The derivative of g. So g derivative. And then I'm going to subtract. And then I have f of x. So I'm going to plug f of x in. 
So 2 times f of x minus 3. And what do I have to multiply by? Derivative of f of x. Okay, so um, this one I probably am just going to leave because I there's not really much you can do to that. You could like change the order, but that's about it. So I think that's good enough. Okay, now number 14, this is kind of an interesting one. Okay, so question number 14, if I was just going to integrate it, first of all, it says the function is the integral of this piece that needs the, what rule would you need in order to integrate that? Since it has an exponent, general power rule, right? Okay, um, but if you derive the inside, you couldn't just use general power rule. In fact, you would have to use the u, u substitution. So you would have to do u substitution. But the question is asking us to derive this. So my question for you is, can we use the second fundamental theorem of calculus to do this problem? What's that? Yes. Yeah, you absolutely can. So anytime you're deriving an integral, you can use the second fundamental theorem of calculus, where you are simply plugging it in and multiply by the derivative. Okay? So if I plug uh, 3x squared directly in, I would just have 1 minus 3x squared squared to the 10th power. And then I would just multiply by the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x. And then what happens with the 0? goes away because it becomes 0. Okay, I would probably write that a little bit nicer. I would call this 6x times 1 minus 9x to the 4th to the 10th power. And leave it like that. I like that better. So how much time did that save? Because <laughs> if you would have had to do u substitution, figure that all out, and then derive it, that would have been a lot of paper you would have to use. <laughs> so that's nice. All right, so the second half of this is interpreting uh, rate graphs. So I kind of like this little section, and this is something that they love to use on the test, these graphs with rates of change. See it all the time. Okay, so I'm not going to read this whole paragraph to you. I'm going to kind of um, circle the parts that are important. Point, point, point. That's hard to say together. Important. Okay, so a point on a uh, rate graph is representing a rate. Okay, at a certain time. Okay, if we are talking about, so I think the easiest way to think of this is that if we're talking about a rate, we're talking about potentially like velocity. Okay, so if this is a velocity graph and we're finding the slope at a specific, between two specific values, what is the slope going to represent? Close. So in this case, this one would be inches per hour, okay? What is the slope going to be? Okay, that's the point. So the slope is telling you about the rate of change of a rate. Okay, so it's kind of like the idea of acceleration. Okay, so this is, yeah, it's squared. I'm going to write it as inches per hour squared, because I like that better, <laughs> personally. Okay, so that's what the slope tells us right there. Okay, um, the signed area, so the area underneath the curve, is accumulation. Okay, so for example, since this particular graph is representing the rate of rainfall, if we are going to add up all of the area underneath that curve, that would tell us the total amount of rainfall between uh, midnight and 5 a.m. 
Okay, so that's kind of a really cool thing to be able to do. All right, so we're going to use this little graph and talk about it. Uh, so for 15, it says to write a complete sentence and explain point A. Okay, so point A is at 3, 1. 3, 1. Okay, what does that mean in terms of this graph? How can we say that? What's that? You're close. Okay, so first of all, what's the time? 3 a.m., right? Okay, so it's three hours after midnight. So we can say at 3 a.m., it, 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 it was raining at a rate, very important word, of one inch per hour. Okay, so you need to be able to, to describe that it's a rate. Everybody good for that? Okay. Uh, what's that? It was raining time. Yes, it was raining before that time. Where is the dark? The shaded region? We'll get to that. They're going to ask us to find the area of it. Um, okay, so for number 16, it says figure out what the slope is between point A and point B. Okay, so just rise over run. What is the slope between A and B? Zero. Okay, so it has a slope of zero. So for 17, what the heck does that mean in terms of the context of our problem? Okay, so remember that, that slope is representing the rate of change. So if the rate of change is zero... Continue to what? Rain oh, I like that word. I like how you said it. Continue to rate at a constant rate of one inch per second. Perfect. Okay, so you could say between three and four a.m. It continued to rain at a constant, very important word, rate, also important, of one inch per hour. Everybody in there? Okay. Okay, so for number 18, it says, well, what is the slope between point B and point C? Be very careful on your increments. Okay, notice that it goes by point two on your Y scale. So what is the slope? Be really careful here. How far does it go down? How far does it go over? Go over. One, right? But negative one, because it goes down. Because it goes down negative one over one. So it has a slope of negative 1. Okay, so what does that mean? So between what two times? Between 4 and 5. So we can say between 4 and 5 a.m. What would be next? Didn't quit raining. Okay, you got the right idea though. So it started to stop. What's another way of saying? The rain decreased. There's a good word. Decreased. So the rate decreased at what? One inch per hour. Square. Square. There you go. The rain decreased. So big word right there. Okay, De decreased is describing the negative value. Rain decreased at a rate of one inch per hour squared. Okay, make sure you have the labeling. 
because you're talking about um, you're talking about uh, an acceleration, the slope the slope of a rate. So it's a rate of a rate, right? Where what do you mean? Where else is it not squared? Are you going back up? Oh, this should have been. Oh, because um, at this one, on number 17, we are describing that it did not increase or decrease. It stayed at a constant rate. But we also described that it was at a constant rate of one inch per hour. Do you see the difference? No, that one is not squared because I'm describing the rate that it's staying at. On this one, I'm not telling you um, what the rate is at exact at a specific time. So if I said, how much is it raining at exactly 430? We would have to look at the graph to see how much it was raining at that time. Okay, so decreasing is describing that it's the rate is getting lower and lower at a rate of one inch per hour squared. Does that make sense? It's a little confusing. Let's see what you. Okay, uh, so for question number twenty, you have to find uh, the integral between three and four. So what are we doing if you're finding an integral between three and four? I mean five. <laughs> Minor details. Uh, no. Do you guys remember what an integral does on a curve? Oh man, I'm pretty sure this was on your test. Area. Finds the area underneath the curve. Okay, so uh, the area between the curve and three and five, so that red shaded region, or whatever color that looks like to you, um, is what we're finding. So we're just using our geometry skills to figure out what the area is. Okay, so what's the area there? Be very, very careful. So you guys see that? Yeah, so you have to be very careful about the increments. Okay, so you have the little rectangle is a height of 1 with a base of 1. So that the rectangle has, well, even technically it's kind of square, but 1. And then the triangle would just be half of that, so it would be 1.5, right? Okay, so for 21, what did we just find? What is 1.5? There you go. Good. It's an accumulation. So between three and five a.m., it rained a total of one point five inches. Okay, so it gives you an accumulation. What's that? Oh, really? No, it's not. It's not area, because it's like a total amount of inches. Like, because they measure they measure um, rainfall by like it's not an area. It's how many. Even though like it is an the only way you can hold rain is to put it into a cylinder. I don't know a volume of water, but they just me measure from the ground to the tip of the water. Yeah. So would it depend on the story Like what like what was used to catch the rain? Like maybe like would you sometimes use square No. Not to describe how much rain has fallen. Yeah, they don't ever do it that way. I yeah. I get why you would be confused. I guess it's easier for people to understand how much, how many inches off it. You know, just like snow. Yeah. You got five inches of snow. Yeah. Same idea. But if they weren't asking for rain, like, is it oh, accumulate? No. So like um, another example might be um, a, a traveled distance. So it would be like let's just say miles. It would be how far that person literally traveled or object literally traveled. Okay. Okay, so 22. They're both here. Thank you. 
Um, so accumulating or approximating, geez, approximating between uh, zero and six. Okay, so now this one we're just going to kind of guess. Okay, so we know that the, the red part is 1.5. About how much do you think the uh, left part is? So you could kind of say, we could just kind of draw like a line right here. So the, oh, good Lord. To the best of our geometric abilities, maybe if I just went like that, that would be a pretty good estimate, don't you think? So it has a height of 1 and a base of 3. 1. <laughs> 1.4, 1.25. Okay, so anybody close to a grand total of about 3? Because if you include the red area too, which has 1.5. So, do we all agree that it is somewhere close to 3? If you feel like you want to write down 3.1 or 3.2 point whatever, I'm going to write down, down about 3. You write whatever one you feel most passionate about. So, uh, what's our complete sentence for this scenario? It rained a total of three inches between say about. of sure yeah about three inches I, I'm pretty sure I'm exact right between uh, midnight and 6 a.m. So we good? It's not not too hard. Not incredibly complicated. All right. So your assignment for Thursday is to complete one through thirteen. Okay.